Good morning. My name is Dr. Ratna Devi. I am a senior consultant radiation oncology, Apollo Cancer Institute, Chennai. Today I am here to talk about the adjacent structures do also come into the path of radiation. Whereas with radio surgery, it is with such sub-millimeter accuracy, you hit the target without any spillage of radiation to the adjacent structures. So, a structure which is very close to critical structure also can be treated with such good precision giving a result like a surgery with radiation, hence the name radio surgery. Radio surgery is not new to us. Gentlemen, Lexel invented about 30-40 years back. Um, at that time, it was done with gamma camera which used a cobalt source. It was meant only for intracranial, that is mainly only for the brain lesions and there was a frame which was uh, fitted into the skull of the patient and this frame will stay in the patient's head from morning until the treatment ends in the evening. So, drilling of a skull into the patient's head was lot of inconvenience and pain. And as a medical professional, we had very little time. We have to fit the frame in the morning, do the planning, do the verification, do the treatment the same day and removal of the frame has to happen. So multiple fractions was not possible, multiple planning was not possible and the time limit was so short and only one fraction could be done. These were the lots of problems which we could encounter. At Apollo, in 1994, we did the first radio surgery and I am very proud to say we were the first one in India to do the radio surgery. At that time, we were using X-Knife LENAC based radio surgery. Again, we encountered the same problems of uh, frame into the head and same day you had to do the treatment and we had to dedicate one whole day for this uh, purpose. So, not many number of patients we could do and more we could do only intracranial lesions. So these were the various problems which we encountered at the beginning. Then came the invention of the cyber knife which bridged all these problems. There was no frame, so no pain. Even children could be treated without any discomfort. No frame, automatic machine, high degree of conformality, any number of fractions we can treat, multiple fractions was possible and mainly not only intracranial, we could treat even extracranial sites. It's a whole body dedicated radio surgery equipment. What are the cases we can treat with radio surgery that with cyber knife? I told you both intracranial and extracranial we can treat with cyber knife radio surgery. Benign lesions, that is where the speciality of this machine lies. Like meningioma, acoustic schwannoma, AVM, pituitary adenoma, craniopharyngioma, trigeminal neuro neuralgia. There are many such indications where we can do such wonderful results you can get with this treatment. Let me talk to you about a case scenario. There was a patient who had a optic nerve meningioma. Optic nerve meningioma which was in the optic chiasm. And already this patient had no vision in one eye. So if this patient is going to be subjected for a surgery, then there was a high risk she would lose the vision on the opposite side because it was in the optic chiasm. So and this tumor kept growing, occupying the optic chiasm. So that's where we did this radio surgery. We could contain the disease, stop further growth of the disease. More importantly, the quality of life was maintained because we could save the other vision. So the, such kind of critical area, cyber knife was useful. And more beautiful part of, about this uh, treatment is there's no anesthesia, no blood. Everything was done as an outpatient at full, complete, no pain. So that is the speciality of this patient. And acoustic schwannoma. At another case scenario, I will tell you, this was a young lady who lives in Oman, Indian uh, origin. She had some difficulty with her hearing. So she went and checked with her ENT. Then they, she was referred to the neurosurgeon. And the, finally, the diagnosis was an acoustic schwannoma, which arises from the hearing nerve. And that was about 2.5 to 2.8 centimeter. And she had no way, beautiful looking girl. And she had so much of stress because the doctor told let's open your skull and remove the tumor and also he said you will be losing complete hearing on the side where the tumor was affected. This was a time somehow she reached Apollo and she came to me and we could offer her a treatment which could, there was no surgery, we can contain the disease 
as well as she could retain whatever useful hearing was there. And she went back happily and she's on regular follow up. And this is something, a blessing for a lady like that. She didn't have a, op uh, she didn't have to open her skull. I think that is something very, very nice uh, news for the patients. So there were other uh, kind of tumors and other uh, uh, benefits like AVM. What is AVM? It is an arteriovenous malformation where there is a malformation between an artery and vein. When there is a malformation like this, there's a high pressure in the artery and a low pressure in the vein and there is gushing of blood which happens from artery to vein. So where the artery has to supply the oxygenated blood was stolen. So the patient had lots of symptoms and this is very common intracranial AVM is a very common one and which can be best managed with cyber knife, no need of surgery right from your pediatric to your adult cases. This is one of the best indication I would say. We uh, with a very highly precise single fraction we hit the nidus and the endothelial cells proliferate, create a plug like a carpentry work, divides the artery and the vein and that ends the problem and this doesn't happen like if I treat today the result is not going to be coming tomorrow. It takes about six to seven months for us to see the result depending upon the size of the AVM. Multiple fractions also we can do in case of a bigger AVM. Coming, is it only for the benign tumors? No, we are treating even the malignant tumors. For example, if I have to give a, a boost for a glioma boost, I can be doing with that. I can do malignant metastatics, like for a CA breast. If the patient is having less than three numbers in the brain, again, radio surgery is a very, very useful tool in place of surgery. And then we can do re-radiation, which was not a possibility those days. Now we have done many number of cases with re-radiation. Up to date, we have done more than two, 2,500 cases over the last 10 years. We started in 2009. So it's like uh, 11 years now, we have done more than 2,500 cases, majority of it has been intracranial. Extracranial, again, it is a real blessing, especially with the lung tumors. With the lung tumors, when a patient is inoperable or uh, for some reason you, uh, you cannot uh, do surgery or in a metastatic uh, setup where you have to pinpointly treat, it is a real blessing to treat these areas. You know, lung is a moving organ and so is the tumor. So, tumor moves as you breathe. So, in, if you have to use a static radiation, it will be covering a larger area of normal lung. Whereas, in cyber knife, because of its robotic, automatic, automatically corrects to the patient's motion, it, it will look and it has got real-time imaging because it has got eyes to see the tumor, it will move along with the tumor and automatically tracks, corrects according to the motion of the tumor as well as the patient. So absolutely no risk to the adjacent areas of the tumor. So which will be very useful in cases like lung, it will be very useful in liver. Liver we never even thought we could touch with radiotherapy with, uh, before the invention of these kind of high precision treatments. Prostate, prostate also, it plays a major role. I can tell it is a mini uh, brachytherapy. Instead of a brachytherapy, we can give, get almost similar to that with the cyber knife. Other areas, cholangia carcinomas, liver metastasis, all these areas are pretty good. Let me tell you one more case scenario. There was a patient, pretty aged patient. He was close to 80. He was born with an absent kidney. He had one kidney and on that kidney, on the top of it, he had a renal cell carcinoma. He was totally unfit for any kind of anesthesia procedures. That was the time we took up this patient. We treated only the top portion because he had only one kidney and kidney is very, very sensitive critical structure. We have to be very careful. Here, we treated just the renal cell carcinoma which was in the upper pole of the kidney and we could get the disease under control and we could extend the survival benefit for the patient for almost four years after the treatment. I think which is otherwise it wouldn't have been possible for this patient. So we, I have lots of uh, stories like that. There was a patient with renal cell carcinoma with a, a metastatic brain tumor where she was not willing to get operated. So it was close to brainstem also here.